What's good y'all, it's your boy Guac. Now before I jump into this video today, I gotta take you guys back to the past. During a time where things were much, much simpler than what they are today. A time before TikTok made the entire internet cringe. Before PewDiePie had 100 million subscribers and Miranda Sings manipulated a bunch of teenagers. You got a one way ticket to manipulation station. Now picture yourself sitting in front of the television. You're not watching SpongeBob or Fairly Odd Parents when it was good or anything like that. No. You're sitting and watching the climax to one of the most badass anime fights of all time. Goku's attack with the spirit bomb didn't work on Frieza. Piccolo's on the ground dying with a hole in his chest. Gohan has a bowl cut for some reason. And Krillin just died again. Goku, at the sight of witnessing his best friend's death, goes into a fit of primal Saiyan rage. The sky goes dark. The lightning's coming down from the sky. The seas are roaring. And Frieza is standing in awe at what he's seeing. And in a bright flash of light, Goku's hair goes gold, his eyes go blue, and we realize he's turned into Adolf Hitler's wet dream. The Super Saiyan legend has finally been realized. The very thing Frieza feared, he has brought upon himself, and Goku gave this man the ass whooping of a lifetime. It was the most badass thing. The transformation that had thought to have been legend for so many years, that needed to be unlocked by having a pure heart of either good or evil. Or in Vegeta's case, pure, unadulterated badassery. The Saiyan legend was finally here. But what if I told you that that Saiyan legend, that at one point in time was thought to be unlocked through pure raw emotion and primal rage, could have been unlocked so much easier if Goku had just watched a goddamn ASMR video? Now you can't the Man, that ASMR is really, really. Ah! Yep. They managed to fuck up Super Saiyan by giving it to the Universe 6 Saiyans and their tingly back sensations. That was absolute bullshit. And this right here is one of the most egregious examples of what Dragon Ball ultimately did to not only the Super Saiyan transformation, but transformations as a whole. Now originally when I was making this video, I was going to make it about how they ruined just the Super Saiyan transformation, the very first Super Saiyan transformation. I was also going to make a video on how much I do not like the Beast Gohan form. But then I figured, fuck it, let me just put it all into one video because Dragon Ball has managed to fumble the bag with all of their transformations. I mean, remember when transformations used to mean something back in the Frieza saga and in the Cell saga when Gohan ascended past Super Saiyan into Super Saiyan 2 after him and Goku trained in the hyperbolic time chamber and learned to master Super Saiyan to the point where they could use it while they fucking sleep? And then we got Super Saiyan 3, which took like three whole days to charge, but god damn. That long flowing hair, the lightning and electricity, and the fact that this man had no eyebrows, that shit was badass. Back in the day, transformations used to hold weight, and when we got Super Saiyan God, which even though it was basically just Goku with red hair, it still felt something special because it was Godly Key. We could have had so much potential with God Key and Godly transformations. And then we got Super Saiyan Blue. That right there was the beginning of the end for all transformations. And that leads me to my first point, what's wrong with Dragon Ball transformations, is how useless they fucking become and how much people get hoed when using these transformations. I mean, shit, when we saw Super Saiyan Blue, it's supposed to be the more advanced version of Super Saiyan God, yet the first time we ever get to see this form, Goku's getting his ass whooped in it. Revival of F set the tone for how trash Super Saiyan Blue was going to be. And even though the Dragon Ball Super manga tried to save it with mastered Super Saiyan Blue, there was no salvaging it at this point. Super Saiyan Blue was the beginning of the end for transformations. Now you're probably thinking, well, how does that affect the other transformations? Because the other transformations basically just became even more useless. There was no reason for Goku to ever go into Super Saiyan 1 or Super Saiyan 2, and there definitely wasn't a reason for him to go into Super Saiyan 3. Super Saiyan 3 took up so much fucking energy, Goku couldn't even use it half the time. And on top of that, he had stronger transformations that had better key control anyway. So what was even the point? 
half the time he only used those transformations just to lead up to him using more power with the other transformations now of course that was you could have argued that that was always going to be the case when they get these higher forms but at least with super saiyan 3 goku only ever used it when he needed to because of the massive strain it put on his body we can honestly assume the same thing even for super saiyan 2 the more power you have the more energy it's going to take up to use and it's going to be harder to use we even saw this with frieza when he went full power as his energy was draining rapidly when he was fighting goku on namek goku even pointed this out and when frieza first went into his golden form he didn't take the time to master it so it was eating away at his energy reserves to the point where he was ultimately not even able to lay a scratch on goku despite the fact that he even stated that if he wanted to he could have killed him right then and there but you have these god forms that basically eliminate that need of key strain even though it does take up a lot of energy to use it they have much better key control as stated by goku himself because they are godly keys so it makes those transformations even more obsolete because now goku has such more control over super saiyan blue than he does his other super saiyan forms he's able to use kaioken with it because he even stated he couldn't use kaioken with the other super saiyan forms because of the massive amount of strain it would put on his body but he was able to maintain it with super saiyan blue which was cool but it was just ultimately it just makes the other forms useless like we see super saiyan and super saiyan 2 and on the rare occasions when we see super saiyan 3 it's you know usually just to lead up to goku using super saiyan blue or whatever other form he has they're just obsolete at this point and it really sucks and this kind of leads me to my next point on how so many transformations are just unearned in the entire series i mean beast gohan is probably the most egregious example of this because that shit just came out of left field in my opinion at least with orange piccolo piccolo wished for his potential to be unleashed and shenron kind of gave him an extra little gift maybe that goes on with namekian lore or something like that maybe that'll be explained in the future whenever dragon ball super decides to come back but the fact that a lot of these transformations are unearned, it's not just Beast Gohan. Let's go back to the Universe 6 Saiyans real quick and how they easily just not only got Super Saiyan, of course Kabe unlocked it through Rage, both Super Saiyan 1 and Super Saiyan 2. But even when he got Super Saiyan 2, it was already ruined by the fact that Khalifa awakened it quicker than he did. I mean, she had just learned to go Super Saiyan 1 and all of a sudden she's just able to advance to the next level like it's nothing. Completely ruins Kabe's transformation later on in the tournament of power and it completely disrespects gohan snapping against cell and that doesn't even compare to kale unlocking this legendary bootleg ass broly transformation that she has and then mastering it in the middle of the tournament of power i know the point was to kind of show that the saiyans have insane potential but still it's absolute bullshit welcome to the room of infinite bullshit <laughs> What the hell is even that? And you could honestly argue that the Super Saiyan transformation was kind of already fodderized by Goten and Trunks getting it when they were kids. And you know, Vegeta even mentioning it, that it was just a child's plaything at that point. But at least they had the excuse of being conceived while their fathers were both Super Saiyans, or at least super powerful. And even if the Universe 6 Saiyans are so much more advanced than the Universe 7 Saiyans, it still doesn't change the fact that the Super Saiyan transformations were just completely unearned by them in my opinion. At least even characters like Frieza when he had his black form and his golden form, he still had to work to get those forms even though it only took him like 4 months to reach golden form which I still think is bullshit. Now I know some people are gonna say Super Saiyan Rose should probably be on here. And you could maybe make the argument for that, but at least with Zamasu, he was already, you know, god level anyway. He was able to hold his own against Super Saiyan 2 Goku, so I guess it kind of makes sense. That and he stole Goku's body, so he should have access to some of his powers and abilities while mixing in with his own natural godly abilities. But you guys get the point. A lot of these transformations, a lot of these power-ups in Dragon Ball just feel so undeserved, feel so out of nowhere, especially for a show that's entire point is not only fighting, but training to surpass your limits. But we have guys out here surpassing their limits like it's nothing, not even putting in a fraction of the work Goku and Vegeta do. When you give characters like Gohan, who is my favorite character in Dragon Ball, and you give him beast form out of nowhere, it really just makes me look at characters like Goku and Vegeta who are putting in all this work training training with the gods and all of a sudden I'm supposed to believe Gohan who's not only a scholar but somehow doing some training on the side is supposed to be able to surpass them with some form he got out of nowhere no 
I could ramble on and on all day, but in my honest opinion, transformations in Dragon Ball used to mean so much. They were the ones who paved the way for badass anime transformations. You can give me Ichigo's Vasto Lordes form, you can give me the Slayer marks from Demon Slayer, or Asta's Demon forms, you can give me Gear 5 Luffy, you can give me all of that. But Dragon Ball definitely started that trend of badass anime transformations. They are the OGs and they paved the way for a lot of these other characters who also had badass transformations in their own series. Yet despite being the ones who paved the way for it, they somehow managed to fuck it up, especially in modern day Dragon Ball Super. One of the many issues I have with Dragon Ball Super is how useless they made transformations. Honestly, in my opinion, the one transformation that hasn't been fucked up in all of Dragon Ball's history, canon and non-canon, is the Super Saiyan 4 transformation. And as I said, that's not even a canon form, and it's still the most badass one. But, this is all just my opinion. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. Anyways, that's just a quick video I wanted to put out for you guys today. Let me know, did Dragon Ball mess up transformations? Do you still think Dragon Ball transformations are good? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Anyways, I thank you guys for watching this video. More videos coming soon, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.